this series, we nerd out on the science and physics that play a role in just about everything. We dive into the way things work and examine the incredible engineering that goes into going fast. What's up guys? Once again, we're back at it working on the race car. One of the biggest things in racing that you're always battling is keeping things cool. Heat is your enemy, especially in a turbo car on the track. You're generating lots of heat, heat soaking all these different systems, turbochargers producing heat in the engine bay, you get radiant heat up from the headers, things like that. Last season we had a failure that we had to fix uh, in the DCCD, which is the center differential in an STI transmission. If you haven't checked out that video, it's super cool. We tear into the transmission and replace all the clutch packs in the DCCD. Ultimately, the thing that killed the DCCD is heat. Now, in an STI transmission, there's a lot of systems running inside there that utilize the same oil that's in the transmission. You have the center differential, you have the trans transfer gear assembly that sends the torque to the rear diff, you have the front differential, lots of stuff that's generating heat, and especially since our car is producing about double the horsepower from the factory, it really does take a demand on the transmission because you're applying basically double the torque through all those systems so they generate lots of heat and whatnot. We're actually going to take more of a scientific approach on this one, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to install the temperature sensor into the oil path for the transmission first. We're going to go run the crap out of it uphill, get some heat soak into it, and see what temperature we peak out at, and then we're going to install a cooler and see what difference we get after that. And the cool thing about this is the earlier transmissions, I believe it's the 04 to 07 STI transmissions, already have an oil pump built right into the transmission. So because these things are designed for WRC, they're really overbuilt for street purposes and that really gives us a lot of leeway on being able to build this for the track. We're going to utilize the oil pump path that's currently on the transmission and build our oil cooler system based around that and hopefully we can see some cool benefits from this thing. What I have here starting off is our cooler. This is a little 5 inch uh, transmission cooler. It's copper tubing. Uh, wound four times through aluminum fins. I wanted a tube pass-through style cooler. This has less restriction in it because you're really not changing uh, the size of the tube that it's running through. The transmission oil is so viscous that I didn't want to restrict the flow very much. This guy was about $30 on eBay, not too bad. It's a nice name brand and it should be pretty good for our application because we're not building any pressure really with this oil system. A low pressure cooler is going to work great. This line is braided stainless steel Teflon lined hose. Now this stuff's pretty expensive. You don't have to go with this. I just had this left over from a previous project that I'm going to use for this. It's going to be perfect because I can do crimp on ends. I can take it to my industrial hose supply store and uh, have some ends crimped on as soon as I measure out my lengths. It will hold up well uh, with the hot transmission fluid running through it. It should definitely live up to the pressures that we will see in this system. You crawl under your STI and you see this hard line right here. Then your STI has an oil pump. So the first thing we need to do is determine the direction of flow for the oil. So what I'm going to do is I've taken this fitting off of the end already, the end that goes to the front. I believe the oil pump is toward the back of the transmission. There's another fitting that you can't see that's behind this transmission cross member. I believe the oil pump is back there so the pump flows from the rear of the car forward into this um, bulkhead here and then it distributes the oil onto the gear set and whatnot from there. The pumping action of the oil is dependent on the movement of the car because it's driven off of a gear that is inside the transfer gear housing next to the DCCD. So what I'm going to do is loosen that fitting there, see if I can get this pointed down. And then I'm going to very carefully by hand, I should be able to back drive the pump by turning the transmission by hand and see which direction the fluid is pumping out so that that'll kind of tell us which direction we're going to go with all of our fittings. <sighs> Oh, perfect. I've turned the pump enough times and oil has started to come out of the front which confirms my theory that the pump flows from the rear to the front. So we're going to set everything up based on that. 
determining the routing of the lines, I made a quick trip to the fitting supply store to get all of my hoses cut and crimped and to gather the necessary fittings to connect everything together. I decided to put our temperature sensor in the oil path before the cooler to get a more accurate depiction of the fluid temps. In order to keep track of our vitals, the Impreza is getting a much needed gauge pack upgrade which requires us to fabricate a custom housing for the display out of ABS. How freaking cool is that? All right, so this gauge pack comes to us from a company called Hyperion. It's a good friend of mine, his name's Kyle. He kind of came up with this idea to create a gauge pack that was more affordable, that had multiple sensor inputs, that was just kind of all in one nice, neatly bundled up package. So this is actually the prototype of that gauge pack. The next version of this will be running on a Raspberry Pi system, so it'll be able to process a lot faster. Uh, it's got a seven inch touchscreen display. You'll be able to log your highs and lows. And right now I've got just the AEM uh, gauge, the AEM wideband gauge, because I just had it laying around from another project. The plan is the next versions of these will actually have a Lambda output as well, so you could use a Bosch LSU 4.9 and it'll input into this and display on the screen just like the rest of it. So what we're gonna do with this now is we are going to take a run up the mountain run the car pretty hard so we'll go out and we'll get the car nice and heat soaked warmed up first take a run up the mountain see what we peak out for trans temp we'll come back put the heat exchanger on and then do the same run again and see what the difference is all right folks we're sitting at the bottom of the hill climb i've been driving around probably about 10 15 minutes trying to get some good heat soak into it and we're sitting at about 120 degrees on the transmission for the oil temp and it's about a 60 degree day ambient so not super hot this is our baseline test without the cooler on the transmission and we're gonna see what it gets to on a day that's uh, close to 100 degrees and I bet you we see some pretty insane increases in temperatures. So what we're gonna do, is we're gonna head back to the shop, we're gonna put the cooler on the transmission and then we're gonna do this run again. Okay, so 
we've got uh, we got the cooler installed. I'm sitting here at the same spot. Car is properly heat soaked, warmed up. The transmission sitting about 120 degrees. It is a little bit of a hotter day today compared to the first run up. First run was about a 60 degree day. So we are going to put this thing to the test. So folks, if that isn't a result, I don't know what is. Not only is it about a 15 degree hotter day than when we did this the first time in our baseline test, but we ended up 30 degrees cooler at the top of the hill compared to the bottom. Now think of what a difference that's gonna make when I'm out on the track for a 20 minute session and the car's really heat soaked and been running really hard and the oil temp is super high. So this is really gonna help shed some heat out of the car because this thing for sure needs it with all the moving parts inside this. So, thanks for tuning in guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video. I am super excited with the result that we got here today. Uh, and I think it's time to schedule a track day so we can get out on the track and go have some fun.